Okay, so let's start the session now. Uh, hello guys, good morning and welcome you all in this session. Uh, myself, Archie Desai, I am your host for this session. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will be there to help you out. Uh, let's moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co-parting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like uh, who we are and what we are doing. So answering your question. Uh, we boost to our offering and also give comprehensive advice service to client who is to modernize their framework and we educate, advise, implement and manage. Then the synergetic solution offering that is a persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, Sales pre sales training solution, play, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. What this Microsoft certification does, it will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained, build confidence to appear for the exam, and get certified. Uh, this is skilling journey here you can advance yourself first you have to complete fundamental certification then you can go with the advanced rule based certification and expert level certification in fundamental level certification we have five types of certification that is AJ 900 ai 900 dp 900 pl 900 and sc 900 Associate level certification, we have many types of certification here you can see on my screen. Then expert level certification, we have AZ305, SC100, PL600 and AZ400. Guys, also we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, AZ220. If you want any certification, you can connect with us. Certification offering. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. We do provide certification or add-on, onboarding add-on like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead and today training is organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech community for Punikars. Emerging technology community for Suratkars. Azure Tech community for Nagpurkars. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app and you can follow our communities there. Then you have to follow code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Guys, please note that participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. Uh, we will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe our uh, YouTube channel. Today speaker for this training is Om Prakash sir. He is a Microsoft certified trainer and currently work with Synergetics as a AVP delivery. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to know more about the topic and benefit of it. In today's session, we are providing you MS 4006 a complimentary learning achievement badge. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Don't forget to subscribe on our LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter for upcoming event updates. Thank you, guys. Now I would like to hand over this mic. Our speaker, he will continue. Ahead. Hello and welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for joining the session on time. My sincere apologies for the delay. This meeting was scheduled for 10 o'clock. Due to some emergency, we had to push it to 10.30. Thank you very much for your patience and support. Let's get started.
Welcome to MS 4006. This is Copilot for Microsoft 365 administrators. Before we begin with the session, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Om Prakash Pandey. I have been working with various organizations from last 20 odd years. The key focus for me has been making sure the technology adoption becomes smooth, whether it is Java based technologies, .NET based technologies, Microsoft SaaS solutions like Microsoft 365 product suite, Power Platform, Microsoft security solutions, Microsoft Azure as a platform. So from last 20 odd years, I have been working with various organizations and my most of the experience has been on Microsoft solutions, Microsoft platforms, including SharePoint, Vistock, and multiple other foundational areas where end users are looking from end-to-end -end implementation, how they can work with these resources, how do you make it, how they can make efficient use of these technologies to solve their day-to-day -day issues. Before we proceed ahead, let me understand the profile of the people who have joined this session. Can I see a quick raise of hands? People who have certified or they have got certain certifications on Microsoft 365 areas. Can I see a raise of hands? Okay, so I can see one hand being raised. How about others? people who are certified on, on Microsoft 365, any of the papers? Thank you guys, please put your hands down. Can I see raise of hands? People who have been, who are not certified, but they have been working as Microsoft 365 administrator, in terms of user management, license management, assigning permissions or roles to individuals. Anyone who has worked on those areas, can I see raise of hands? Great, I can see a few hands going up. Namisha, Shreya, That's great to see. Thank you guys, put your hands down. Can I see raise of hands? People who are new to Microsoft Cloud, whether it is Microsoft 365, Azure as an environment, people who are new to Microsoft platform or Microsoft solutions, I'm seeing more hands going up. People who are new to Microsoft 365, can I see raise of hands? That's great to see. Thank you very much, everyone. Put your hands down. Let's proceed ahead. Now, the reason why I ask these questions is because there is certain prerequisites that we have for this session, right? Because this is focusing on a one day course, primarily for people who have been already doing the administration aspects 
and how they can leverage their skills, how they how things can get simplified for them using Copilot as a solution. Okay, people who are new to this, don't worry. I'll try to make this session as simple as possible so that people who are new, even they can understand the nuances, they can understand the details of how one can go ahead and map these members. So as you all see, this course is designed for administrators, especially working on Microsoft 365 or even people who want to get into this role. Now, once it comes to Microsoft 365, this has been an extensive area and uh, somewhere around 2007 is where I began my journey with Microsoft 365 at a very, very nascent stage. And today, if you see in 2024, there are more than 50 plus pre-existing applications that we have which solves different kind of productivity solutions for organizations, industries across the globe. My suggestion over here would be, before you all go ahead and take this exam, you all should have good understanding of Microsoft 365 services. You all should be practicing various implementation using the Azure portal, uh, using the portal solution, right? Admin.microsoft.com. And along with that, look at some of the core areas from perspective of PowerShell, which is another easier way of creating and managing resources by executing some of the core commands that we have. If you look at the core agenda over here, the primary focus is preparing our organization for Microsoft 365 Copilot. What is the design aspects over here, right? What is the key members from perspective of data security, compliance in terms of Copilot. As far as the second module over here, we'll be getting into more details from perspective of role-based access control. How do you have secured user access? And within the third module, our focus over here is managing data compliance for Microsoft 365 Copilot, looking at some of the productivity options over here, data governance options over here, using data classification for sensitive information. Some of these details of module three is actually part of your SC400 certification where we are using Microsoft Purview for achieving this. As far as the lab environment is concerned, you all can try creating your environment over here from the lab perspective and using the relevant lab You can create your resources inside that and practice some of the key aspects, key members within your Microsoft 365 environment. Since there are quite a few people who are new to this environment, I'll quickly provide some of the foundational aspects, foundational areas of what is this Microsoft 365 environment all about. If you look at your Microsoft 365, 
earlier it was more prominently known as office 365 so with this new naming convention which microsoft has added over here the new naming convention which is being add, added over here or changed over here microsoft has added lot of security aspects within your existing resources there are lot of new apps which is being added within microsoft 365 apart from this when you are looking at microsoft 365 this is more about a productivity suite number of products that we are mapping over here which will help us ensure productivity of end users if you look at microsoft 365 as an environment these are the apps which are available now some of these apps would be part of your current license whereas there could be other areas where we can add resources we can leverage on them so if you see this so you have admin app your bookings calendar connections engaging using resources like viva insights microsoft planner power apps sharepoint online exchange online you have specific implementations like copilot for sales microsoft visio stream so some of these resources could be the older one there are quite a few resources which are newer ones being added over here along with that you also have copilot as a resource here so our focus right now is primarily working with some of the foundational members foundational aspects over here along with copilot resources let's proceed ahead let's go to the first module thank you very much for investing your saturday over here i know you have a lot of better things to do and uh, especially with diwali functions diwali festival coming around so i'll make sure i uh, make best of the time that you'll have given to me i'll utilize this opportunity to share maximum information which is relevant and make sure you'll have a great year by implementing these facilities and features given by microsoft 365 let's go to the first module in this learning path while i'm discussing these things let me also share set of relevant links with you all so i can see few details on the chat as well thanks ashok thanks krishna so in case you have any questions doubts queries you all can post your questions on the chat i'll be more than happy to answer those questions since this session is more about microsoft 365 so put your questions related to those uh, related to that particular area 
if you have any certification details that you all require my colleague archie and manish they are there so you can post non technical questions as well so if you go to the course over here we have some primary uh, same set of modules that i am discussing as presentations you also have the course syllabus being published some of the core modules over here in terms of copilot design data security and compliance so whichever information we are discussing right now they are also available as part of your learning path so as and when time permits you all can go through that apart from this you also have a course video so before your exam you all can take a look at this video as well satosh ashudosh as we go ahead we will discuss the same question in more details and we will also see set of examples in terms of implementation let's get started with the learning path with the first module over here as part of this module what we are going to discuss about is what is this copilot all about microsoft copilot for uh, microsoft 365 and what are the components that we have behind the scene which will help us to get efficiency and right implementation of these resources there will be a lot of new terms and terminologies in terms of large language models microsoft graph which are the foundational members that we have behind the scene so we'll take a look at that let's first understand the logical architecture over here which will be a key differentiator for people to understand what is the difference between chat gpt and copilot as a resource so if you look at chat gpt chat gpt is, is primarily an interface that we have a chat based interface that one would look at and type the required questions get relevant answers from there right so that's an interface what goes behind that interface is something which is very important as far as copilot is concerned we can initiate respective copilot prompts from various devices which is being initiated which is being installed and i'm not sure how many of you are aware about it once it comes to these devices once and especially working with microsoft 365 within microsoft 365 with one license we can associate five devices over here right so once it comes to this copilot this copilot prompts prompts in sense the text that we write on the chat gpt that's referred as prompts over here we can ask our questions we can create set of resources using these copilot members if you look at the copilot components over here we have copilot service which orchestrates the communication or the responses in the back end so if you see the member over here users using their devices are initiating the copilot in the back end it could be through teams word powerpoint excel right any of your ui resources any of your application that we have in the back end it connects with copilot for microsoft 365 and here if you look at the resources available we have relevant members like tasks insights chats calendar right so these are set of 
interconnected data source, data, uh, data stores that we have, right? So user information, messages, meetings. So for a given user, his or her calendar it is connected to which groups, which files that person is uploading, which devices the user is connecting from, right? Who are the other team members that we are working with? So all these things will be part of your Microsoft Graph, helping us with interconnected information. So once it comes to your major data stores that we have, right? These could be minor information being stored over here, right? Or I would say the actual backend for messages would be your exchange online. Actual groups that we have, let's say users group or user properties and attributes, that would be Microsoft Enter ID. In terms of files that we're talking about, it will be SharePoint gallery, uh, SharePoint uh, libraries that we have, various galleries that we have in the backend. As far as groups are concerned, that could be associated with Viva Engage groups. So there'll be two set of members over here. So one set of member would be where the actual information is being saved. And second is using Microsoft Graph, how we can extract user specific information. Let's go to the Copilot's logical architecture. So in terms of Copilot service, this is the service that we're talking about. Our instance of Microsoft Graph, which helps the underlying APIs to connect to the relevant data stores. So there will be certain members like Teams Chat or uh, especially Teams Chat, which actually just displays the information. It does not store anything. The actual data is being stored in SharePoint, OneDrive, Exchange. So there'll be some set of services which extract information and show it to us. There'll be other application which not just show information, but also store data in the backend members. Similarly, as far as Copilot is concerned, Copilot actually does the processing. Helps you search or locate the right set of information connected information and share that with the end user. It does not store any information. Your information stores that we have is already separate over here. As we get uh, as we go ahead, we'll go into more details of how this copilot works with LLMs and what are the other models that it focuses on. OK, and that will be the differentiating aspect. So as we go ahead, we will discuss about that. Let's look at the Copilot over here. Copilot for Microsoft 365. What are the options available? Prostodosh, I hope by now it makes sense for you. In terms of the key difference between Microsoft 365 Copilot and ChatGPT. If you look at these Copilot resources, so along with behaving as an input identity, what are the other things that it is doing in the backend? Let's understand that. So here, if you see, you have Microsoft 365 apps, which I showed you all already. Right, the series of apps. It helps you to collaborate seamlessly with Copilot. Now, what is the meaning of this statement? The meaning of this statement over here it says is, if Copilot, if Copilot is asking the user, uh, sorry, let me put it this way, user is asking Copilot, can you give me all related documents or related information about say a sales which is with Accenture, a sales which we are dealing with Infosys, Wipro, 
any specific organization. Now this copilot is supposed to go in the back end, check with all possible apps that we have, wherever the data is being stored, collect them in an organized manner and give it back to the end user. Right, so that underlying communi um, communication, underlying collaboration has to be done over here. So if you look at your copilot, it specifically assists the user in terms of creating, comprehending, editing documents, right? So as far as these uh, documents are concerned, when you're talking about these resources, here what we're talking about is generating set of member, and that's where the generative AI comes into picture. Say all that information is being collated. Now I have to present that to my management. I have to present that to my other colleagues, right? So in these scenarios, I would want to create a analysis summary of that information. That would be part of your Word uh, Copilot with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, which will create that information. Along with this, what it also required is NLP, which is natural language processing, because here when it comes to Generative AI, what it is talking about is the end user may not be giving information which is directly related. The end, end user may not be given information which is directly mapping to the way how the data is being saved. And here we are not talking about a structured query language. Instead, what we are talking about is a pre-existing language being used, right? And this would be more a human understandable language where we have natural language processing being used. And through this language processing, we are talking about breaking up the information being shared through tokenization, semantic analysis, sentiment analysis, there could be some spelling mistakes over there. So doing a right kind of language translation. At times it could be a spoken English or a uh, uh, in any particular language being used. So some of the, these things are uh, similar from perspective of chat GPT as well. So some aspects could be overlapping from how a chat GPT works. But here the data source is an organizational data source. That's the key differentiator. In chat GPT, it's a generic data source. Here we are talking about specific data source of that organization. Now, when you're talking about these data sources, what are, what are we actually mentioning? So these data sources primarily are LLMs, large language models, which is a lot of historic information, a lot of details that we have, right? And these LLMs will specialize and understand human-like text using NLP. Operate as generative AI producing new content that we already mentioned. Provide the engine that drives co-pilot capabilities. As the name suggests, what is this co-pilot or the meaning of this co-pilot? Co-pilot primarily means it is an assistant. It's not the pilot or the the, the core driving member himself or herself, it's an assistant. So it will assist the underlying environment to generate content and perform much better as compared to normal scenarios. Now these underlying, the underlying member over here is Azure Open AI service, which maintains these LLMs using the basic information, using the newly trained resources, Right. And in the back end, it uses open AI service for doing the required processing. Right. So I'm sure by now everybody is clear about the first member over here, the data source, the required processing, which is being done. Like I said, if you'll have any questions, doubts, queries, you can put it on the chat.
let's continue further now one would say om prakash i i do think microsoft graph is something which is new it has already been there even before copilot came into existence and that's that would be absolutely right microsoft graph is about an api endpoint a simplified api endpoint a, a generic kind of entity because earlier what used to happen with each application a resource that we have right each application component that we saw each of them had a different set of apis once it comes to microsoft graph it has given a unified api which can help us get information regarding one member say maybe user or maybe files and based on that entity what are the other connected information that we have we can extract that so if you look at your copilot integration with graph this is what takes it to the new level altogether so if you look at your microsoft graph it enables copilot to leverage or use that api in the back end to extract information or uh, get that correlated information together right and share it with the end user let me go to the third point over here because this is something which is very very crucial for every individual now when we are talking about chat gpt i am actually not worried about that why am i not worried because chat gpt is something which is generic information a generic knowledge gyan as we as we can talk it talk about it it can help me get lot of information from the outside world i don't see it as a big challenge but if we are talking about organization information that is sensitive to a given enterprise so here what we would want to ensure here what we want to ensure would be this information which is being shared should not be information which is where the user does not have required permissions right so this microsoft graph in the back end works with assistance aligned with user permissions so it uses role based access control so whether deepak is typing a query or om prakash is typing a query or mentioning a prompt depending upon what permissions om prakash has versus deepak has right the output will output will change so each of them will be able to see the information which is relevant for them which is mapped to their roles correct because using chat gpt people believe that they can access any information and with copilot within microsoft 365 people go ahead with the same preconceived notion saying anything which was not accessible earlier i will be able to access that it doesn't work that way i'm sure some of you all have already worked with the search implementation right same thing holds true over here so whatever query string or query parameter you use unless you have permissions there you will not be allowed to access that information deepak says my screen is invisible is it same for others as well guys can you see my screen guys is my screen visible to you all thanks ashish for the confirmation so deepak you may just try logging off and logging in back see if that works for you sudeep here we don't use any vector database ourselves microsoft will create the required backend 
but we don't have to create any vector database myself. My uh, recent working has been with uh, PostgreSQL in uh, Cosmos DB. There we I have used vector database. If you look at Microsoft Copilot with Graph, it gives us grounded chat. So any kind of chat format, any kind of context specific members that you would want. Right? You can utilize your LLM in and a contextual prompt. I don't have to explain this too much. The reason being people have been using chat GPT and the core difference between the standard search and the chat GPT is it remembers the previous state. It remembers the previous conversation and all the new responses being given will be aligned to that conversation. We uh, all uh, will be aligned to the previous context which has been established. We can have user business data and applications and all the insights of the data sources, which is which I showed earlier in the previous slide. Right, all that data is being used wherever it is giving any kind of responses. Sudhir, I don't understand the question here. What do you mean by hallucination here? If you can be more precise so I can answer that question. So if you look at the integration, You're right, Sarvanan, with that. So as far as the uh, semantic indexing is concerned, right, and the vector database that we're talking about, that is something which is done by Azure OpenAI, which is in the backend. So none of your existing information is going to going under a change. So once the information is retrieved from the graph API, right, it will be stored in the Azure OpenAI. And that's where the context setting uh, mapping is being done and the right kind of information is shared with the end user. So does that make sense? Sudhir, did you get your answer? Okay, let's proceed ahead. So let's go ahead and check for Microsoft 3. Now, once it comes to this copilot or once it comes to your Microsoft graph, right? Understanding the underlying architecture, people would have questions saying, with my Microsoft 365 tenant that we have, how does it map over here? What are the options available? Right? So let's discuss on that. So, one thing for sure. One thing for sure, once it comes to your Microsoft 365 tenant or the directory that we have mapped, it will have all the user information. It will have all the users, groups, devices, and all the permissions being mapped over here. Along with that, from an Entra ID point of view, it will also have set of permissions over here. So once it comes to your copilot, and guys, this is what I was talking about. So as far as the vector database is concerned, this is being managed and maintained within the Azure OpenAI service in the backend. So we don't have to worry about it. Right? Your underlying data, which is there in Exchange mailboxes, OneDrive, Teams, SharePoint, this information remains as it is. So depending upon the prompt being mentioned, it will do the required data extraction, do the required processing over here. And once that data is being processed, then the final information will be given via any of these client facing apps. 
absolutely right, Samana. Once it comes to your co-pilot for Microsoft 365, if you look at your co-pilot for Microsoft 365, it's part of the organization tenant, right? It is within your Office 365 and entity association. And once it comes to Microsoft, Microsoft is very, very clear saying that once it comes to responding to the chats, responding through the NLP implementation, right? All these things would be done only under context or, pur or purview of security, compliance, checking for data location, privacy. So even if there is an enterprise information, data is coming from enterprise knowledge base, 